Hey, what's up folks, GK here. So in the last video, we did discuss about the Mount Kirk games, uh, the first case study for the PC exam. Second case study today, we're gonna discuss about the Dress for Win. I'm gonna go through the Dress for Win, you know, the whole case study, and what are the key important things that you have to understand from the case study. And we're going to do the solutioning, obviously, like, you know, if you have to relate the services that uh, the Dress for Win is currently using, and what would be the services that Dress for Win would possibly use when we when they migrate to cloud and I'm also going to go over some of the main keywords that you have to remember and the strategy behind the rest for win and obviously these things will play very important role in the terms of the questions that you might expect in the exam feel free to first go through the entire case study before you start watching this video and once you're done with that so I've, I'm gonna save some time of yours by not reading line by line I have highlighted few things that I found useful uh, in, in the case study and I'm going to discuss more on those keywords. All right, so let's get started. Dress for Win is basically a web-based portfolio, uh, personal wardrobe sort of, uh, you know, website, which means basically it's going to help you to maintain your personal wardrobe and they have both web and mobile app. The company's main income is through advertisements. They monetize their content, and they also get referrals from the other websites. They, these two are the main income source for their uh, product. So it's a sort of a free app application. You can just go to the website or download the app and you can use it and you can create your own wardrobe and you know, they would send the referrals from your, uh, from their application to like, let's say amazon.com to buy some apparel or to, to other, some other e-commerce website. So analytics is most important for them because based on how you go and look for the wardrobe, right? So they're going to suggest you the best wardrobe that is recommended for you personally. So they create the personalized portfolio. So that's Dress for Win is all about. Now the problems they are facing is the infrastructure currently, which is in on-prem is insufficient for their growth and they're expecting huge growth. So they want to obviously ultimately go to cloud all right now. The solution concept so basically this is the main thing that you all have to remember this is the strategy that they want to follow so they want to do it basically phase by phase they want to do it in the first phase they want to create dev test and dr so they want to create dev test and dr environments in cloud okay and in phase two, depending on how phase one works, they would start moving the least critical apps to cloud. So that's their phase two, right? So basically if you see, you know, this is a common strategy that many enterprises do. Uh, they call the first phase as usually a lift and shift. So this is one keyword that you would often uh, hear uh, in the cloud migration terms that when, whenever a company is migrating to cloud, they would first, uh, you know, do a lift and shift, meaning they would try to create the whole infrastructure of what they have in on-prem and move the whole thing as it is pretty much without changing much into the cloud, which they call it as a lift and shift. So that's, a, that is the strategy of Dress for Win 2. So basically they want to do first lift and shift, create dev test and DR environments in cloud. And then slowly they would start moving the least critical applications and this might involve refactoring or creating more cloud cloud native services. Now the technical requirements. So easily create non-prod environments in the cloud, right? So the automation framework for the provisioning resources. So they want to heavily focus on infrastructure as a code. So this is one keyword, right? So they heavily want to focus on automating their whole infrastructure in the cloud because whenever they want to create a dev, a dev test or DR, they want to do it via an automation. They don't want to manually create this stuff. So that's important. And they want to follow DevOps model, meaning the CI, CD and the faster to market approach. So they want to follow continuous deployment, uh, you know, and they want to deploy their services both data center or cloud. So this is another keyword. So whenever you hear this term and whenever you relate this with continuous deployment, can you comment in this video, what service you think of 
that can manage both your on-prem and cloud when you want to do continuous deployment which tool that comes to your mind immediately when you hear these terms and please put in the comment section but i'm going to answer you know in the end of the video so encrypt data at rest and at wire i mean at wire and at rest so this is another important thing as well for the sake of security so they they're emphasis they're emphasizing more on the security aspects on cloud and private connections again because you have uh, both on-prem and cloud how you want to make sure that you know the connectivity is private and what are the services that you might have to use in google cloud for the private connections like vpn etc etc so that's with the uh, technical requirements now let's go through the executive statement right so what executive is saying is their total cost of ownership this is another keyword that you want you all want to learn and they're also talking about the uh, the traffic patterns and obviously the whole cost of the whole migration to cloud is not only to have a better scalability in the cloud but also they want to reduce the whole cost of their whole infrastructure by going into cloud so possibly they are hinting towards using more and more managed services all right now let's look at their technical requirements right so let's look at the existing technical environment at a very high level they have all the servers running in linux right so ubuntu is obviously linux and the current infrastructure is using mysql database for their user data inventory and static data and in the terms of compute they are using microservices based architecture so that's very well clearly defined here and that's important to note so they are using microservices based architecture and so their services are running in tomcat right so this is ms layer in tomcat and then for the static content they're going to use nginx so nginx is used for static content so you whenever you know user hits user will first uh, hits nginx and it will be a user will be served with static content and then you know nginx will forward the request to the ms layer for the business logic where you have uh, you know tomcats and java and stuff now in the terms of processing the data analysis which is crucial for them because as we have discussed uh, they want to recommend users best wardrobe you know or, or the referrals from the other site so that their revenue is more uh, going to be increased based on how users are clicking on that and also they are buying the content through these referrals so the data analysis they are doing using batch processing so this is important so they are not doing real time processing that we have discussed in the mount curve games they are going they are doing using batch processing not the real time processing so in the batch processing you always have some delay but you would batch you would do processing of huge amounts of data so rabbit mq for messaging social uh, notifications and events and you you already got the service that in your mind when you want to go to cloud um, as an alternative for rabbit mq so the other miscellaneous services or servers that they are currently using is jenkins for you know ci cd Jenkins for your CI CD and your DevOps efforts and monitoring obviously monitoring you need for any servers so bash and host is one term that you would often use whenever you want to connect to production environment uh, through a intermediate server to uh, be more secure than opening your production production servers to the administrators and security scanners so they want to have an audit report on how their servers are how secure their servers are so that that's important too for them to have a security to have security scanners and they also uh, made it very explicit in the terms of the drive that they are using for vm host so this is for the storage appliances meaning you know the which which uh, storage they are going to use they are currently using for their servers and this is for mysql they are using san and they are also using for image storage logs and backup so in summary they are using phased approach 
they're doing lift and shift and their whole migration to cloud is going to happen eventually but it's going to happen in two phases now let's look at a possible sample solution so if the whole environment that they have the whole infrastructure that they have in on-prem if they have to move to cloud as part of their first phase as part of a dr process right which we call it as a lift and shift you would want to ideally match service to service and pretty much keep your development maintenance less because you don't have to manage both on-prem and as well as cloud if you for example let's say you are using a microservices in tomcat but you want to eventually go to containers you don't want to do that in the first phase uh, that that's a good thing to happen but you don't want to do in the first phase because you not only have to maintain your on-prem and you have to do extra work by creating the containers and deploying them into your dr so that's a double work for your development team if, if you are thinking about purely about the first phase you don't want to do that so keep keeping that in mind now for mysql the best replacement or uh, the best solution would be obviously cloud sql and if they are using anything else for static data you know if they are using redis on prem you can use memory store right so that's one possible solution or if they are if they want to do some sort of no sql then obviously they can use cloud data store for mobile backend uh, stuff so they this is with respect to the databases part right now in the terms of compute if they're using microservices like we discussed they can possibly use k8 and app engine in future this is again like i've said you know when when they are going beyond first phase but if they are doing lift and shift then all they have to do is create vms and create their containers i mean rather create the services inside the vms so that's a, a pure lift and shift so basically they want to use um, google compute engine here and they want to use load balancer as well because their traffic is global so they have to balance between global traffic so the load balancers are important here for ha and for uh, rabbit mq obviously you know the best solution would be cloud pub sub apologies for my bad writing but cloud pub sub for messages and notification and cloud functions again if they want to trigger something for event triggers so before i go into the miscellaneous service servers uh, for the hadoop and spark the best alternative would be cloud data proc for hadoop and spark bigquery for analytics now before i go into the miscellaneous servers i'm going to discuss about the storage appliances so for the storage appliances so cloud storage for the backup so for for this one you know we can use cloud storage for the image storage or logs and backups and stuff and local ssd for vms for gc vms and let's say they don't want to use cloud sql and they want to create their own mysql uh, you know databases on on a vm then we can use ssd persisted drives that's with respect to all this stuff and now let's talk about the other miscellaneous stuff for the jenkins we can create jenkins using the marketplace pre-configured me so that's with jenkins so if you want to use jenkins you can use open source on gc you know you can install jenkins on gc and just use it and now the other tool that i was discussing i know i asked you guys to comment on the video is if you want to manage your 
you know whole infrastructure as a code and you have to do it both on prem and off prem so always remember for that it's better to use terraform and i i did so i did cover terraform in one video please try to watch that video if you don't know what what that tool is all about but terraform is one thing if even if you get a question in the exam uh, if they give you multiple options like you know terraform and uh, cloud deployment manager or any other services but if if the keyword is that you have to manage both on prem and cloud then it would be easier to manage using terraform so if you have to use terraform you can install it on prem uh you know and and then they can target both cloud and on prem as well and for the private connectivity cloud vpn is important and if you remember uh, the first section they did talk about having the private connections as well as having encryption of encrypting the data at wire and rest so always remember that in google cloud one good thing is every data is encrypted by google cloud so you don't have to encrypt specifically uh, the data but if you want to go to the next level of securing your data what we can use is we can use a customer based keys so we can recommend them to use CSEK for encryption and firewall rules, etc. So th these things will play an important role for the encryption. So this is so far um, the whole rest for win and we came up with the possible solutions for their you know cloud migration strategy uh, the services that we can possibly use in the cloud now let's look at some of the questions all right folks now let's look at uh, these questions so i have got two questions here pause the video and feel free to go through the whole question the first question is just has asked you to recommend machine types they should deploy their application servers to how should you proceed again this is part of their uh, lift and shift strategy right so they want to match their current on-prem servers to the cloud servers perform a ma mapping of on-prem physical hardware cores and ram to the nearest machine type to the cloud recommend that just for win deploy application servers to machine types that offer the highest ram so this is this is good but this is going to be very expensive this is not the right answer Recommend that Rust for Win deploy into production with smallest instances, monitor them over time and scale the machine type until the desired performance is reached. This is possibly a, a good solution. And the last one, identify the number of virtual cores RAM associated with the application server, virtual machines align them to custom machine type in the cloud. Monitor performances, performance and scale the machine types up until the desired performance reached. I think this is the right answer because it you're not only matching them to the on-prem but also you are going to test and scale the machine types based on the performance so this is the right answer so the dress for win an operation engineer wants to create low cost solution to remotely archive copies of database backup files so data files database files are compressed a star and this is a low cost solution so they want to do with the lowest cost so what are the solutions here and they want to archive copies of backup files all right now create a cloud storage transfer service cloud storage transfer service is a very expensive service so these two options are incorrect a cron script using gs util this seems to be a fairly low cost solution but you don't want to do regional for the archive because regional is expensive so the code line is the right answer but again, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, according to me, these are the right answers. But you can comment in the in the in the comment section if you think otherwise. With that, that completes the second case study of Dress for Win. And if you do like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. And I will come up with the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.